The Star Wars Legends Essential Guide to Warfare, written by Jason Fry and Paul Urquhart from 2012, displays an imperial ranking system that describes the Galactic Empire's chart of double row rank plaques and the difference between positions, line and specialist ranks. I felt it required explaining in more detail in terms of its context within the overall imperial ranks timeline of the Galactic Empire's era, due to its significance when understanding the chart's context in relation to the ranking system reorganisation after the Empire's defeat at the Battle of Yavin and the destruction of the first Death Star. The reorganisation took place due to a massive loss of commissioned officers on board the station and within the Imperial Navy and Army ranks, which largely belonged to a single row rank plaque system until that point. The subject of position ranks, line ranks and specialist ranks is part of the Empire's rank system within the Essential Guide to Warfare which plays into this narrative regardless of canon or legends. So before we delve into explaining the positions on line ranks, it is important to mention when the ranking system would have been implemented by the Imperial military. In a previous video I described the Imperial military branches, which were split into different sections depending on the operational activity within the Empire. For example, the Imperial Navy was split into line ranks, operation ranks, field command staff, and the ancillary branches of the Starfighter Corps and Navy Security. When looking at the Essential Guide to Warfare's chart, it is crucial to note that these double row rank plaques were in existence during the last few years of the Empire's reign, and furthermore were an updated version of the temporary rank system quickly implemented after the entire system of ranks was thrown into turmoil after the Battle of Yavin. This is outlined in version 2 of West End Games' Imperial Sourcebook. I have to admit, and having analysed the single row rank plaques extensively, I understand it would be confusing, as there are some inconsistencies with individual plaques, and probably far too many coloured plaques, at particular ranks, such as lieutenants, captains and admirals. However, that was due to the different military branches under the single row rank plaques prior to the Battle of Yavin. But obviously some Disney productions have also added to that confusion, with some strange arrangement of coloured tiles. After the first Death Star's destruction, the system did simplify in terms of the number of ranks and plaques, as the rank plaque system was eventually applied across all branches of the Imperial Navy and Army. But having said that, the difference between position ranks, line ranks and specialist ranks was a further complication which adds diversity to the entire military system between 0 BBY and 4 ABY, and later for the Imperial Remnants, where the system would have been fragmented and ungoverned. So let's take the first half of the chart where it displays the position ranks of the Imperial Navy. A position rank, as it was referred to, is a rank assigned to an officer aboard a specific ship or unit. This means their rank and plaque was not a permanent rank, but it was simply used for an assignment or a special purpose. Less common position ranks, such as a High Admiral or the rare title of Warlord, were honorary positions assigned to Grand Admirals or MOFs. Where the horizontal lines between positions and the plaques are not aligned means the plaques could vary, and in this case the plaques between the ranks of Captain, Commodore, Commander or Admiral could be different as determined by the individual assignment. Although in theory a fleet admiral on an assignment would always wear the plaque of 6 red over 6 blue tiles with 3 code cylinders and aligned to the rank of Admiral. An example of this was Fleet Admiral Firmus Biet who was assigned to Darth Vader's personal fleet, the Death Squadron. A fleet admiral commanded the largest task forces within the Imperial military and would have certainly been the senior officer assigned to the sector unless an honorary rank was assigned such as a high admiral or a MOF. Also the position rank of admiral or commodore could be assigned to a command subunit within the fleet and known as a flag officer. An example of this in Legends was Admiral Blitzer Harsk who was asked by Firmus Piet to bolster the Death Squadron fleet at Endor in order to ambush the rebels during their expected attack. Now let's look at the second part of the chart where it displays the line rank and also the specialist ranks. Although unlike the old single row rank plaque system, these plaques were aligned and were the same irrespective of the Imperial military branch they belonged to. However, their actual rank titles did vary. The line ranks of officers on board Imperial starships would always be the command crew holding key stations aboard the ship such as the bridge, the command decks, the officer row, the system control decks and the engineering section. The specialist rank was specifically used for Imperial officers recruited into the ancillary branches of the Imperial Navy, and also the Imperial Army used a similar set of ranks. 
As the chart shows, the specialist rank of general, only the very few officers were promoted into the line ranks of vice admiral, meaning the line ranks held superiority over their specialist and ancillary equivalents. The line rank of senior captain would be the superior officer over a specialist and ancillary branch colonel. The junior specialist ranks from captain down to an officer held their own related titles. For example, the Starfighter Corps held titles such as squadron leader, wing commander and group captain during this time. It is important to note that the writer's commission to create the Expanded Universe rank chart has taken inspiration and influence, it seems, from the military rank systems of both the American and British systems. There are many similar rank names and titles, but also some fictional license added, of course. So the fictional Star Wars Imperial system is not meant to mimic the exact ranking and relationships of those in real life systems. For example, the fictional parts of this chart are honorary titles like High Admiral and Warlord, but certainly the Imperial Navy lends itself closer to the American Navy ranks than the British. That's all for today. For more Imperial Explained videos, please give a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and as always, long live the Empire.